Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Well, welcome everyone to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm your host, Chris Shea, and this is the podcast where we talk about practical tips that we all can do on a daily basis, which can lead us to finding our inner peace. I know that inner peace is possible. I've been without it. I've found ways to get it. And on this podcast, we talk about ways that we can find it and keep it on a daily basis. Well, we're joined today with uh, Lynn Goldberg from uh, Breathe. And today's topic, we're going to be talking about meditation and how meditation can help us to find our inner peace and what the function of Breathe is. And uh, we'll let uh, Lynn tell us more about that. But um, right now we'd like to focus on how do we find our inner peace through the techniques of, uh, meditation. So thank you very much, Lynn, for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, it's definitely our pleasure. And, uh, if you can, uh, introduce yourself to the audience and, you know, a bit about yourself and, uh, what got you into the whole meditation movement? So I was definitely not a natural meditator. <laughs> and, you know, there's an expression, if you, uh, if you don't have, t- if you don't have uh, 20 minutes to meditate, you need to meditate for an hour. That yes. was definitely me. <laughs> I, I really was a typical type A, always on the go, always sort of rushing from one thing to the next. And my life fell apart. Um, My mom Mm. had been diagnosed with terminal cancer, and at the same time that that was happening, I was going through infertility treatment. And of course, everyone says, you know, if you just relax, you're going to get pregnant. (laughs) (laughs) And there's nothing worse than people telling you to relax when you're not feeling relaxed. (laughs) Exactly. So I I really was um, trying to do something that would help me, and my mom's doctor actually recommended that she try meditation. This was 20 odd years ago when it wasn't as popular as it is today. And I thought, okay, if it works for her, I'll try it too. And it really was one of my life jackets in the midst of every single life crisis. After that, I lost twin girls. Um, My husband and I split up. I lost my career at the Mm. time. And so it was just, a series of life events, which of course is what meditation helps us to deal with, right? It's right. Like that whole idea of dealing with impermanence and change and not having to sweat the stuff or, or feeling it, but not, you know, making it part of your, um, your stress and worry and understanding that you can only control what you can control were huge, huge lifesaver tips for me. Hmm. So it was from those experiences and uh, the tips that kind of moved you more into the meditation movement. Yeah. So I, you know, I had started with my mom being sick. I was meditating Mm -hmm. through that. Um, And then at the beginning, I was more of an emergency meditator. So I would, you know, wake up at two or three o'clock in the morning with my heart pounding (laughs) and a Mm. full-blown anxiety attack. And I could get myself to calm down if I meditated. So I didn't have this regular practice. Um, And then what I noticed was with time, it became something that I started to do a bit more regularly. And of course, the more you meditate, the more benefits you start to notice. So it was interesting because you know, my coping mechanism at that point had been a glass of Chardonnay. It was like, okay, I'd come home from work and I'd automatically reach for a glass of wine. And then I was sort of in that habitual pattern of numbing out and trying to push away. And I didn't want to deal with whatever was going on. 
Um, and I started learning different coping skills, which were a lot more effective long term. So, yeah. And then once I became a sort of adept at having a practice and saw the benefits that it had given me, I wanted to learn more about it. I then studied and then became a teacher and then started uh, going into schools originally and trying to help kids learn this important skill that I wished I had been taught as a kid. <laughs> right. And that was that was sort of how I got got into this. So what were some of those benefits early on for you and especially when you're doing the like as you say, the emergency meditations. Well what were you getting from it that kept drawing you back to this? Well initially I mean the first thing I would understand right away was that if I was, you know, so much of our fear is based on future events, what's going to happen, you know, what if, all the what ifs. Mm -hmm. And meditation trains us to focus on what's happening in the here and now. And, you know, not so much just so scary at three in the morning in bed while you're safe and, yeah. you know, <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, that, that was pretty enlightening for me just knowing that I could not have to that I didn't have to worry about all these the, the weight of the world wasn't on my shoulder so that was really one of my first understandings and then what I also got was just the physical benefits to to having a practice which of course you know being in that fight flight reaction which is equivalent to basically feeling like you're being chased by a saber-toothed tiger thousands of years ago, all of a sudden your heart's pounding and your heart rate goes up and your blood pressure goes up and everything is just affected. You're releasing cortisol and adrenaline into your body. And that would happen to me, I don't know, 15, 20 times a day. And yeah. when I started to regularly meditate, and by the way, not just me, most people experience True. that on a regular basis. Um, just by the most simple things, right? If uh, if you're waiting in line at the bank and you're frustrated or if you're late for a meeting or, you know, all of those things cause us to have that same type of reaction. So as soon as I started to build up sort of um, a regular practice, I stopped having all of those uh, regular fight flight crises on a regular basis. <laughs> So it really was able to calm yourself. Um, is it more of the experience of the being outside of yourself or is this something where you're going deeper into yourself or something totally different? Well, on a, on a physiological basis, when you are actually meditating, you're releasing oxytocin, which is the love hormone, and you're mm -hmm. releasing serotonin which is your feel-good hormone. It's actually like an antidepressant, a natural antidepressant. So, <laughs> excuse me. So you actually start to feel better almost immediately. And then your heart rate slows and your blood pressure slows and everything, your breathing normalizes. So you actually feel better right off the bat just from meditating. And then on top of that, um, you are in... Well, when you say you're going deeper into yourself, I, I mean, some people don't have that experience for a while. Um, simply just sitting there and breathing tells your body that you're not in crisis. It's nothing right. more complicated than that, you know? So letting your body know that you're okay, you first kind of have to convince yourself that you're okay and not in crisis. Well, you, and you're not convincing anything or doing anything. Um, I think that's the sort of the fallacy with meditation. You're not doing very much. You're just sort of there watching what's going on. So what typically happens with us is um, you have, let's say your heart starts pounding. Well, you're going to have a whole story about your heart pounding, right? And you're going to go, oh, my God, look, I'm having a, a panic attack. And mm -hmm. then your brain, your brain feeds your body. <laughs> now right. your brain's engaged and your brain is starting to get all anxious. And then, of course, that makes your body even react more strongly. So by, by helping you to take your attention off of those ruminating thoughts and come back to an object of your attention, and that could be your breath or that could be... Uh, so many things. It could be um, 
a visual representation, it could be parts of your body, whatever it happens to be, as you learn to train your mind to do that, then you begin to um, let go of those thoughts. Or gotcha. at least recognize them. Yeah. Right, right. So how were you able to make this transition from going, you know, from understanding how the meditation is really helping you out into now, it, it seems that that's your focus of life and, and you know, the, the point of breathe. Uh, right. how, how do you make that, that? That's like a huge leap. <laughs> it was a huge leap. Um, and it didn't happen overnight. What happened was I started teaching um, and I started getting a tremendous amount of satisfaction from it and really seeing how much it was benefiting um, so many people. I was volunteering at, at the very beginning in hospitals and then I was teaching in schools. And then as I was um, trying to, to help more and more schools, the teachers would say to me, do you have something we could take home? Is there something that we can do that doesn't, because of course, teachers are so overworked and they don't have yes. that much free time. So they were looking for something that they didn't have to do on that one educational day that they had. So I went to my husband who was actually in the technology business and I said, do you think you can help me put something together that would be like tapes or something? And he <laughs> laughed at me and he said, you know, that's called an app. So, <laughs> so in, in that very simple way that that's how breathe comes about. Yep. Yep. And then of course, you know, it's, a, it's been an incredible tool. It's just been so, amazing. Yeah. Sorry. And, and, you know, from what I've seen of it, I, I really like it. And, you know, it, it seems to me to, to really be, um, you know, focused on what we need to be focused on. It, it, it doesn't seem a complicated app, you know, where I, I right. need to go through a lot of hoops and all to get to where I need to go. It, it seems to me it's like front and center. I mean, you want to meditate, here's what you do. Right. And that was really our goal. It was to demystify it and make it as simple as possible and as accessible as possible to as many people as possible and take out all of the um, spiritual mumbo jumbo that, can be alienating to a lot of people. So we really try to really highlight all the steps that you need to do and then give you the basic tools so you don't have to go anywhere to do this thing. You can do it from the comfort of your bedroom in 10 minutes a day. Right. So can you kind of run through a bit about uh, breathe as the app and then what would it do for us uh, if we were looking to meditate is this someplace where we would start or is this for advanced users well, kind of walk us through the app if you could sure so what we've what we've done is we've designed it for the ultra beginner as well as for someone who's been practicing for 20 years um, okay. and we have a program that's designed to help you learn the basics of meditation that we call our daily program and that starts you off what we did was we built an alarm clock into the app so that a lot of people say oh i don't have time to meditate and then of course that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy <laughs> so mm -hmm. we <laughs> we built it into the app so that you just set your alarm and then the meditation comes on and that becomes your your morning wake up routine um so and then you can of course set reminders through the app and and really make it a part of your life um and each day it gets progress it's a progressive program it teaches you all the things that you need to learn and over time it is increasingly longer um and more more profound so that's one part of the app. Then we have so many other different parts for so many other different life events. We have one that's called My Boss is a Jerk, which is basically helping people with their own compassion for themselves as well as for others. We have for families, we have um, a whole kids section that's completely free and we did that that really to help families meditate together and also because we wanted children to be able to get this um, 
as a regular practice as well. So mm-hmm. we've got we've got uh, everything from grief to to eating, you know, mindful eating, everything that you can imagine, uh, so that we could help people develop this this uh, further and deeper. Yeah, and and that's one of the things that. You know, I really like as as I've been trying to work my way around uh, the app and all is that it's focused on those life events, and and that's what I find to be uh, important, not just for myself, but even with my clients. That mm-hmm. you know, how do we? It's one thing to teach somebody to meditate on a daily basis, but how do we tailor those meditations to what's going on? You know, throughout my day. You know, and and right. if something is happening in my day that, that I really feel I need the meditation, you know, it becomes that question, do I just do what I normally do or is there, you know, some variation or, you know, how how do I work it? So I really like that the app throws in those, you know, different uh, situations throughout our day. Yeah, I mean, the idea of meditation is that it's not just something that you do for those 10 to 20 to 30 minutes a day, but it's also a tool that you can use for the rest of your life. And as of course, when things do come up, which we know they do, what, what are the principles? What are the things that you can remember? And then how can you start to bring those to your intention or to your, to the forefront of your mind and bring it into consciousness. And so that's what we, we really try to do. And, and um, we have people who have really, been writing us beautiful letters just letting us know how vital that is for them so i'm happy to hear that uh that you found it useful that makes us feel good (laughs) yeah no no, definitely and um you know the fact that you know we all have our phones with us all the time that it really becomes something that could be easy to do you know that if someone's having a hard day you know can you just pull out your phone and you know, find something on the app, you know, for like 10 minutes or whatever, and just kind of mm-hmm. restart your day, regroup and uh, right. move forward. Um, and I really like what you say with, with that alarm clock uh, for the morning, you know, is how do you start your day right? And, right. you know, I, I think that that's very important to do and, and having that alarm, you know, can really get you into a routine. Yes, exactly. And we do a whole thing on, um, you know, mindfulness with technology, we have a week program to help people sort of understand that this is a, an incredible tool that doesn't have to run their lives, that they actually are in control of this tool. Um, and one of the things that, as you said, when people start their day off um, looking at their emails, for example, and then of course you're set off right away because you're, you're, you start racing to all the things that you have to get done, you're not really allowing yourself to um, start your day with your own intentions. You're being dictated. You're on someone else's train. This way, you're driving mm-hmm. your own. And, and we really try to help people understand how they can have a lot more control over their own destiny. One of the aspects that I found to be very interesting and different is you have the sleeping uh, portion, you know, how how to get to sleep, you know, sleep better. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm well aware of all the different apps of, you know, the sounds and nature Mm -hmm. stuff and all to get you to sleep. But is there meditation that can help you to sleep better? Of course, of course. You know, one of the greatest, um, things that you learn in meditation is how to let go, right? And it's a really difficult mm-hmm. challenge for a lot of us because allowing yourself to get to the place where you can um, not feel like you're in control of, or that you have to be in control of all of life's events is really scary for most of us. And of course, if you have a hard time letting go in your day to day, then it becomes equally challenging when you're getting into bed and you have to let go of your mind so that you can fall asleep. So we help cultivate those, um, those, we help cultivate that muscle really that allows you to let go. And then we mm-hmm. also have an entire section devoted to all of the um, 
practices that you can help to allow yourself to fall asleep better. And then guided visualizations and that kind of thing as well. So Right. Yeah, I, I guess I never really put those two together, that meditation yeah. could actually help us gain a, a deeper, uh, you know, probably healthier type sleep. And um, so that, that was something really cool for me to see on there and, you know, do a little experimenting with because uh, I, I just never thought of it. That, that was yeah. totally new. And how'd you find it? Uh, just by going through your app and, you know, oh, there no, no. was... What? How'd oh, you find oh it how the experience. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, <laughs> um, maybe I need to meditate for a second here. <laughs> um, no, I, I actually, I did it a couple times and, mm -hmm. you know, found that it was effective in helping me to fall asleep. Um, you know, did, did it help in the quality of the sleep? I'd have to do it more often, but I can see how it could. Mm -hmm. Um but it definitely did lead me into, uh, you know, being able to get to sleep and, um, you know, probably did stay sleeping longer than I normally would before I wake up in the night. Yeah. So, we, but we I, I would have to do it more often. The, yeah, we, I mean, we have a lot of people reporting that it, it's been a lifesaver for them. Um, and the science backs it up. So we know mm -hmm. meditation to be useful. Oh, definitely. And, you know, I'm, you know, very much into, uh, you know, putting meditation out for my clients and all because there is all that scientific evidence that okay. how well meditation works and also its healing components. Right. Um, but yeah, that sleep issue for some reason just never crossed my mind and, until I saw it on the app and, you know, oh. gave it a shot. And I was like, oh, th this is interesting. Well, that's cool. <laughs> okay. Um, when, you know, we would have beginners, like, you know, if there's people listening and saying, you know, I, I've never meditated before in my life and, you know, they keep hearing me talking about it and others talking about it, what would you suggest them to do if, if they're saying, you know, I, I'm really not too sure about this, but I, I think I should try it. What, so what should they do? A couple of things that I would say, first of all, um, the I I was I really need to make this like I, I want to belabor this point because people think oh it's not for me and I'm not the right type of person but mm -hmm. if I could learn to meditate anybody could learn to meditate and I've taught five year old kids with ADHD how to learn to meditate so truly mm -hmm. it's, it's for anybody um, but the simplest thing is to download the app set the alarm and then just make it a part of your regular routine. And they say, what, 21 days to start a habit until you start right. to build that neuroplasticity. So make a commitment that you're going to do it for a couple of weeks. And by the end of that time, you'll have a habit. And, and it's not more complicated than that. It's literally just deciding, okay, I'm going to RPM, rise, P, meditate. We say do it first thing in the morning. So, you know, you set your alarm and then you go. And then that's it. That It's not more complicated than that. And if mm -hmm. you absolutely can't find the 10 minutes in the morning, then, you know, you have headphones, do it on your morning commute or do it, uh, you know, as you're waiting in line <laughs> at right. the coffee store or whatever it is. But, you know, everybody can find 10 minutes. And and I appreciate when you bring that up, you know, like standing in line and things like that, because that's something that I have mentioned to some of my clients that, mm -hmm. you know, for one, I, I don't believe when you say you don't have the time, but if you truly don't for whatever reason, you know, get creative with it. You know, if you're stuck in traffic on your commute or like you say, standing in line, there's still things we can do that are meditative in, in nature, even if it might not be what we would consider to be, you know, like traditional meditation, you know, uh, right. but, but it would still be very effective in, in meditating. So, you know, that would lead us into that conversation about what mindfulness is. And, and simply being aware of the present moment by either coming into your senses, so paying attention to, you know, your sounds around you or noticing any smells or, 
uh, simply just by taking a couple of breaths and just being present with your breath and making it conscious. All are things that you can do with a couple of, you know, cup in a couple of minutes. Um, having said that, the easiest way to become mindful is to develop that practice and, and do that, that practice on a regular basis because the more you practice um, on your cushion or in your bed or wherever you happen to be, the easier that becomes to do in the rest of your life. Mm. Yeah, that, that makes sense. It really sounds like this is just something that if you're going to do it, you just really have to set your mind to it and just do it every day, uh, regardless Absolutely. of what you're going through or what's happening around you. Absolutely. And I think it's just, you know, why do you want to meditate in the first place? And m most people have a, a list of reasons, you know, they're blowing up at their partner or they're feeling anxious because of work or they're uh, feeling out of control or, you know, whatever the reason might be. They're not sleeping well. All of those reasons are usually good enough to make you want to start to calm yourself and learn some skills to do that. So remembering what the reason is that you wanted to get started in the first place is usually a pretty good tip. So it sounds perfect. So yeah. people want to know more about uh, Breathe as an app and, and learn more about the meditation. What, what's the best way that they can uh, discover uh, this app and, and the web presence? Well, it's absolutely free to try. So anyone can just uh, go to Breathe, B-R-E-E. -E, it's two E's. Um, so B-R-E-E-T-H-E and download it and they can try out the whole thing for free. Sounds excellent. And uh, definitely I will add that link to the uh, show write up and, you know, encourage people to check that out. Like I said, you know, I, I've been uh, messing around with it and, and I find it to be extremely user friendly and, you know, not filled with any extra stuff. It, it, it's just focused on meditation and, uh, sometimes other apps out there get filled in with a whole bunch of things, but it really helps to be focused on what it's all about. Well, thank you. I, I really appreciate your kind feedback <laughs> and it means a lot. <laughs> thank you for that. Great. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking the time to be with us. And, you know, uh, again, I just encourage everybody to check out the app and, uh, you know, give it a shot and, you know, feel free to offer us some feedback on, uh, you know, what your experiences with the app, uh, you know, are. So, again, thanks for being with us and uh, look forward to, you know, uh, some more meditation with the app. <laughs> it's great talking to you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode, and I hope that the message in this episode has inspired you and given you some of the tools that you need to find peace in your life. If you have found those tools and you found this to be inspiring and you know of others who also need these tools, please share this podcast with them. Let them know of the opportunities out there that they too can find their inner peace. Thank you very much for the sharing. Thank you for listening and have a very mindful day. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.